wireless connection. Mm -hmm. I think we're good now. We're good, we're good, we're good. Yes. Bam! We're on. <laughs> Finally. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. I don't care. I don't know. Maybe you're just waking up, maybe you're just going to sleep. I'm so excited to see my shadow here right here behind us. Maybe I'll fix that in a second. Okay. And yes, we gotta fix that in a second. Now, so happy and so privileged to be with a good friend of mine, not only a good friend of mine, but also a, an expert. An expert. Hello, Sonia. Thank you. Welcome. Oscar Caro. Raul Caro. Welcome, everybody. It looks like it's a Saturday morning. Um, now, this is only in English. That's all I know. It's gonna be only in English. Because, I sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> because, um, you know, Scott is a good friend of mine, works here at We Co Work, and then I said, Look, can you help me out? He says, How can I help you, man? I'm not an immigrant. No, actually, you, you had a beautiful comment. So, um, we promise, welcome Ricardo uh, to our Facebook live session of 100 Days of American Immigrants. But this is a storytelling of successful people. At the end of the day, it's successful people storytelling. Um, to do justice, why don't you just tell the audience on Facebook and Instagram, if anybody's on Instagram and our YouTube channel, uh, a little bit about yourself, a little bit about who you are, and then if, I, if you miss this, I'll jump in and I'll, I'll say more. And I, in the meantime, while he does the introduction, I'm gonna fix this situation of the, of the shape. All right, well, hello everybody. Hey, my name is Scott Bradley. I'm a uh, leadership coach for young professionals. I do a lot of career development. Uh, type work, and that's why I work out of WeCo Work, uh, surrounded by a pretty awesome community of people that are doing really cool stuff. Uh, but uh, Juan asked me to come here and talk about immigration, but obviously I'm a super white dude, so <laughs> I didn't know how much about immigration I could talk about. But um, you know, I think it's a super important topic, especially with how everything's going on in the world today. And uh, I think it's a topic that people need to hear about, and especially different perspectives, because I think. When you think about immigration, it's, it's sometimes just one focus, True. and um, it's so much more than that. So you mentioned to me something uh, when we were down. When I asked you, "Hey, could you help me?" I said, "Of course, I can help you." Out. Yeah, I am an immigrant because <laughs> I migrated from Arizona to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> you are you you are not leaving the place that you were born. And secondly, yeah. why don't you share with? Uh, with Lang, with Lucas, with everybody that is connecting, this video is gonna be looping around a little bit of, of the you know the background of your family. Yeah, so um, it's funny because my, my dad's side of the family, they have uh, there's there's six of them, six brothers and sisters, and one of my dad's sisters is super into like ancestral work, um, you know, the type of work where she wants to trace all the family tree okay. and family background and stuff. But what's really fascinating is that my dad's father, so my grandfather. Um, actually had his family immigrated from Germany okay. and it was about the 1940s when that time happened and at about that time if you remember there was a war right World War II World and War II. Uh, what had happened is their last name was Weingartner so Weingartner. W I E or W E I N G A R T N E R or something okay. like that right and this probably Weingartner. and it is probably a different pronunciation in German probably yeah probably but either way like there was a lot of uh, German uh, distaste after the war, obviously. And so um, at that point, my family, my, my grandparents' family was living in America and they decided, hey, we need to change our name because we're being not persecuted, yeah. but it's not the most popular thing in the world to have. And the same thing goes for having like a Jewish name if you were living in Germany during the persecution of the Jewish uh, Jewish community. So it's funny to say this, but 1940, a story that happened, you know, family this, you know, decided to move to another country for, for, for a different life. Whatever the purpose or whatever the condition, whatever the crisis or whatever the motivation was, uh, we're still living, you know, through the same times, mm -hmm. you know, it's, yeah. it's called 2017. Yeah. Um, have you ever gone back to Germany? To well, I mean, I've gone back to Germany, but I haven't gone back, back to, like, to my native roots. To yeah. search. You know, you remember the city by any means? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, the city they grew up in? No, yeah, no idea. Yeah. I know. But if you were to, like, literally, you could actually, I'll have my aunt I'll share this with her, and okay. she'll be able to link it in the notes and everything, and uh, you can see it. But I think it's really fascinating because, you know, we think about uh, back then, whenever that w the war was over, or even when you think about uh, the Japanese population and how they're being persecuted, they were put into camps um, during the war. I mean, unbelievable stuff. Yeah. But, you know, we, we take a step back and we think about, um, we have to take lesson, lessons from history. True. And not repeat those lessons. Not repeat the lessons or mistakes or whatever you want to call them. Now, um, 
Thank you for the beautiful story because when you told me, say, hey, we got to share this with a lot of friends that we have over here uh, in our audience. The second thing that I ask you to do, because I'm trying to be as respectful as I can with your time. You know, time is the most important asset that you and I have in common in the same amount and the same quality. So we want to be as brief, we, wanna, we don't want to rush things in. Um, you consider yourself, you do told me, an immigrant. So in that case, Scott right here, which before we jump into the explanation, why don't you tell the audience what you do right now? What, is your, your, what are your professions? Yeah, so my, uh, I guess my corporate profession mm -hmm. is I work in corporate sales. I work for Red Bull, an uh, right. energy drink company. So um, I work in a very, uh, very high paced, very energetic uh, company. But then I also have a leadership business where I uh, do a lot of career coaching for young professionals on right. the side. And that's, that's truly my real passion. So Peter likes Red Bull. <laughs> a lot of my, uh, a lot of my, uh, a lot of my traditional skills are in coaching, uh, leadership, and then teaching as well. A lot of, a lot of what's the coaching. what's the you, your company, your website for people to know? It's linked over here already, by the way. Yeah, so you can see it. It's so uh, Peter is liking the the coaching. <laughs> Welcome, Tammy. Appreciate you joining us and giving us the happy faces and the love. Yeah. So uh, if you want to find any of my stuff, I've got tons of uh, resources, tools. Uh, all about career development, professional development. Uh, they're all on my website, uh, www.scottabradley.com. And also on social media, his name is linked right here. Yeah. Also, you have an amazing newsletter that is impacting so many people's lives that I read. I try to do the most of everyone I can, yeah. but I, you know, because we, we and I share the same spirit. Yes. So if you get the chance, yeah, he is amazing, says love, uh, PETA. Happy birthday, Peter, by the way. I apologize I didn't make it to the party, but lately my party time is being restricted. So, now, let's jump into the mini grid. Now we're gonna talk about the difference between three words that makes people confused. Now, especially if you are following the news. Um, yeah, so. for sure. Well, I think this is a, you, you brought it up to me, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is an awesome topic. Primarily because a lot of people don't understand what it means. Mm -hmm. uh, so these three definitions, the three words, and how it can be applied in different situations in different times. So, do you want me to jump into it? So, uh, before we jump in, okay, we got the website, this guy is amazing, also that's, you know, when, when you talk about dedication, consistency, and talent, you're looking at it right now, because we've talked about you in our meetings, in our, in, in our um, team meetings, um, you know, begin, yesterday, our you know, in, in, uh, guest said, Start something, get started, but finish it. You know, so important in the constant repetition. So, why don't we just jump into the class? And I'm gonna step up for a second because he's gonna need the board. I hope you guys enjoy. If you see that this is something to value, please share it. Share it with your friends, loved ones, friends, um, a family, your network. So, it's all yours. All right, so. Uh, hey, what's up, everybody? So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the three three uh, biggest words that we have a lot of misconceptions about, and that is the words of uh, migration, immigration, and emigration. Uh, being from Arizona and Texas, uh, I grew up with a lot of people around me that were migrant workers, and they were coming over from Mexico border. They were coming over to Arizona. I only lived about an hour away, and they were migrant workers coming in, and they were leaving eventually. And so. That's what migration is. So the first word we'll talk about, and if you can't read my handwriting, I apologize, but just deal with it. So, um, so migration. So migration is the first word, and migration. What that means is uh, with my shadow. So migration is the movement of people, animals, um, anything else that, that that goes to a specific place for a temporary amount of time. So this is temporary. Like I said, my handwriting is not so good, but temporary. So migration is a temporary movement where uh, when I was growing up in Arizona, you had the migration of, of animals like geese flew through Arizona. They go right down through Mexico up to Canada. But you also had migration of workers that come from uh, that would come from Mexico and go to Arizona to work for a specific temporary amount of time. Um, so that is what migration means. Now, the second one is immigration. And immigration, oh my gosh, yeah, something like that, immigration is where you, a specific person, leaves their country, or sorry, immigrates into another country. So I immigrate in, from Mexico into Arizona if I'm going to stay permanently. This is a permanent move. Permanent. 
Um, you guys need both any law, legal? Legal perspective, yeah, you actually move into another country legally, you move into another country, so immigration. Mm -hmm. uh, now, another one is emigration, and I'll kind of give examples of these too. Emigration, E-M, I-O-N. This is also permanent. And emigration with an E-M versus I-M, emigration is whenever you leave your country. And so emigration is the removing of a country, and I immigrate into a specific country. So let's just say my family, we grew up in Germany. That's a very good picture of Germany right there. <laughs> and I moved to the U.S. Emigration is when I leave the country and I immigrate into another country here. So um, what I think is fascinating is that a lot of people don't realize that, and I was thinking about what emigration really meant, because we don't use this word quite a bit, but when I thought of emigration, I thought of what are people emigrating from? You know, we have uh, countries and cities where people are emigrating out and they're becoming refugees from their own land and they're emigrating out. Whether they like it or not, they're trying to leave and find a better place. And they're trying to immigrate into another country or into a new society where they have a safety and security. And I think a lot of misconception is there about why people emigrate in the first place. And obviously there's a lot of different reasons, but um, I think in a lot of the war-torn areas that we see, um, like for my, my family, I mean, there's, uh, and you think back to why America started in the first place, a lot of our, our, our ancestors emigrated away from the evil kings and emperors of England, and, and, they, and people are moving from away from the Middle Eastern areas because of the turmoil that's over there, but they immigrate into another country in search of a better life. And I think um, a lot of these three areas have some misconceptions about it, but I think knowing it is su super important. And obviously these are just definitions, these are just words, um, but they mean more when you put it into a specific meaning. So. Um, that's kind of a, that's something that's been on my mind for a while, and I think it hopefully might clear up some things. So once again, a migration is temporary movement of, of people or animals. So you think of flocks of sheep. You think of uh, you think of uh, sheep. What am I saying? <laughs> yeah, sheep migrate. Uh, flocks of geese migrate. Um, you think of bu buffalo, bison. You think of um, even. Um, even different um, wildlife in Africa, they all migrate. These are temporary movements, but they all go back to where they came from. Then immigration is a permanent move of only people, and these are both only people. And involves law. And involves law. And emigration is the permanent movement out of a specific country. So that's the lesson for today. Thank you so much. Appreciate. Um, I think, uh, thank you, Anna Franich, uh, Kelly, Sara, Erika, everybody that is joining us. Thank you so much for the, all the love. If you are, don't have the time, please come back and, and watch this again. This is something that a lot of times people get, get confused. And I'm going to have, as a guest, also an immigration attorney oh, who is cool. also an immigrant. And he's going to give us a little bit more uh, information. Anastasia, thank you for joining us as well in Ukraine. In the 17th century, this is when it became, you know, something as a tool for procedures and laws and regulations for countries to close borders, pretty much, mm -hmm. and have control because the word migration comes from the Latin root word emigrare. Emigrare, which means moved from one place to another place. That's pretty much what it means. But it was, it was applied to everybody, people and humans, and they said, no, 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 only humans because you have to sign these papers. You have to be legal or yeah. illegal. Yeah. So that's an actually very controversial word, legal and illegal. We are not going to get into politics or religion because we actually never do. That's an matter of fact. I appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, I think this is it for today. Anna Milena, thank you for uh, so much for joining us this morning. If you're having a cup of coffee, I hope you're enjoying a great cup of coffee after this, this you know, well delivered, you know, definitions of, of words. Yeah. Um, now, we're going to go offline. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for, um, you know, our, we're, I'm just looking at our, our YouTube uh, camera here, but I think it stopped right on time. <laughs> if you are on Instagram, uh, whatever the trash we have on Instagram, I'm going to pick his brain on something that you recently, um, you know, had the opportunity to visit up abroad with uh, what is called influencers and YouTubers and everything. Oh, yeah, sure. So maybe we'll talk about it one of these days about, about specifically 
how to become an influencer or how to you know help other people. Yeah. So that'd be great. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. The, his information is gonna be linked here. If you think this was of a lot of great value to you, share it, share it, share it. Add him if you want him, you know, follow him on his page. And thank you so much for having you know the opportunity to watch this video and have an amazing day, guys. Cheers, peace and love, guys. Bye-bye.